chapter 2. And I'm going to start reading in verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. This has been our foundational scripture as we have went through and have talked about the Holy Ghost. We've used this scripture because, um, not because that uh, the Holy Ghost was only introduced in the New Testament, but because we believe that we are living in the last days and that we are right on the verge, if not already in, what Joel chapter 2 calls the last day outpouring. How many of you believe that we are in the outpouring of the Holy Ghost? When Peter stepped out of the upper room, he stepped out, they, they started mocking him and making fun of him, and he said what? He said, we are not drunk as ye suppose, but we are fulfilling the prophecy Joel spoke of. And he was talking about how the outpouring of the Spirit had began. But we, we went through the first night and we talked about how the Holy Ghost, who He is, how He's, how, how he's a co-equal of the Trinity, how uh, 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 what He does, all those things. And tonight, we're going to start getting in to the effects of and the, the baptism of and the tongues of and the language of. We're going to start diving into that tonight. And tonight, we're going to talk about praying and speaking in tongues. How many of you are excited tonight to learn about praying and speaking in tongues? Amen? So I, I know that Joel chapter 2 has been our foundational scripture, but I've got another scripture that I want to dive into and pull out tonight, and it's in Isaiah chapter 28. Since we're talking about not just the Holy Ghost, but we're talking about what the Holy Ghost enables us to do. And one of the things that the Holy Ghost enables us to do is to pray and speak in an unknown tongue. Amen? Amen. Y'all quiet tonight. I feel like I may have to teach tonight. I don't know. Isaiah chapter 28. And I'm going to read verse 11. I want, I'm going to go kind of slow tonight. I've been going really fast. I'm going to slow it way down tonight because I want us to really grasp the understanding of this. Um, this will be on YouTube hopefully tomorrow. If you know anybody that questions tongues or doesn't have an understanding of tongues or doesn't understand the Holy Ghost, every single one of these messages are on YouTube. Tell them to go and watch it. You can uh, actually pull it up. You can hit the share button. And you can share it directly to them. You can send it to them in a text message. On Facebook Messenger. There's many ways to get it to them. Get it to them. Because I believe that with understanding and revelation of the word. Comes power in itself. Amen. 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 <laughs> Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 11. This is what it says. The prophet says. Speaking on behalf of God, he says in verse 11, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people. Isaiah says, With stammering lips and another tongue, another language, that word tongue there means language, with stammering lips and another language, he will speak. To his people. This is a prophecy going forth from Isaiah telling what is going to happen in the future after the Holy Ghost comes upon us. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, when um, we're baptized in the Holy Ghost, the way that he speaks to us and the way that he speaks through us is with stammering lips and an unknown tongue. A lot of times when people come to us and they, and they try to debate the tongues with us, one thing that they try to pull out is there's no evidence of it in the Old Testament. But Isaiah 28 and 11, I don't know what else it could be. With stammering lips and another language, an unknown language that's not known to you, He's going to speak to His people with that language. Amen? 
And that is exactly what we're going to talk, to, talk about tonight. I'm so excited about this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. I'm sorry. Before we go there, let's, um, if you want to turn with me, go to Mark 16 before we go there. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be, begin to build on this. Mark chapter 16. Mm. Hallelujah. Mark chapter 16. And I'm going to start reading with verse 19. But before we do that, let me build this for a minute. How many of you know that all life starts with and has a language? All life does. Every living creature... On this earth starts and has a language. If you're a human, we've got different types of dialect. We've got different types of languages. We've got English, Spanish, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, Vietnamese. With every, with every race, they have a language. They, they have a, 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 a dialect, a way that they speak. Even in the English language, we have the same language, but it might have a different slang to it. You go up north, what do they call it? They call it pop. You go out west, what do they call it? Soda. You come, you come here, what do we call it? Coke. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, the waitress comes to your table and they say, what would you like to drink? You say, I'd like, a, you, I'd like Coke. She say, what kind? Because Coke just means soda here. But soda, you go, you go out west and you say Coke, they're going to bring you a Coca-Cola. You go up north and you order a cup, they're going to bring you a Coca-Cola. But there's language with everything. Humans speak human. Dogs bark. Ducks quack. Come on, somebody. Lions roar. With every life, there is a language. Now I want to dive into Mark chapter 16. And I want to read a few verses right here. Let me start with verse 15. This is what he says. And he said to them, this is Jesus, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. When did the new life begin? When did the New Testament begin? It did not start with Matthew chapter 1. It did not start with the birth of Jesus. But it started when Jesus made the new covenant with me and you. And He made a new covenant by going to the cross and dying. And what does He tell? Does anybody remember what He told Nicodemus? When Nicodemus said, how can I be saved? And He told him, you must be reborn. Nicodemus said, how can I go back into my mother so that she can birth me again? And he said, Nicodemus, I'm not talking about a natural birth. I'm talking about a spiritual birth. I'm talking about an old man dying and a new man resurrected. I'm talking about new life. And I just got done telling you that every life starts with a language. If we're going to have a life, we've got to have a language. And Jesus said, I'm not just bringing life, but I'm bringing a language with it. And in this life that I bring, there's going to be a language that comes with it. Are you hearing me? I'm going to try to contain myself tonight. Mm, this cold weather's got us slow and it's got us sleeping. But I'm, I'm telling you, I feel the fire of the Holy Ghost about to sweep in and warm us up tonight. Amen? Amen. And then it goes on. And it says this. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So then after the Lord had spoken to them, He was received up into heaven and sat down. Listen to that. Remember what I told you the other night? And sat down. Down at the right hand of God. So Jesus is saying, now that I've brought this new life, I'm going to ascend into heaven. I'm going to sit down. But there's coming a language to verify this new life. I'm going to send something. 
to give you a language. You're going to speak with a new tongue. Because see, at this time, nobody spoke with a new tongue yet. You following me? This is good, right? It's good, right? All right. What is that new tongue? That new tongue in Acts chapter 2, the Bible says that when the Holy Ghost came upon them, they spake with diverse tongues. Diverse tongues. What is diverse tongues? Diverse tongue is not an unknown tongue. Let me get that straight. You see, when we speak in tongues, and, 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 and some people believe you can speak in tongues on command, that's fine, but uh, I, I, it takes a little bit more unction for me, and, and that's okay too, I think. So um, when, when we speak in tongues, it might sound something like, ba 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 ya ba da ba da I don't know, whatever. That's an unknown tongue. But what they spake in, in on the day of Pentecost was not an unknown tongue. It was diverse tongues. Diverse tongues means they were speaking in a language that they were not born to or taught. That's right. Okay. So what does that mean? That means I don't know Spanish. But the Holy Spirit comes upon me and I begin to speak Spanish fluently. I don't know Chinese. But I begin to speak Chinese fluently. Do you hear what I'm saying? So the first thing that I want us to realize in this language is there is different types of this language. There's different gifts that come along with this language. There's a diverse tongue. There is a speaking in tongues. There is a praying in tongues. There is a tongue that is to be interpreted. There is a tongue that does not have to be interpreted. But the thing is, is we get caught up on, on believing it can only be one thing and we refuse to believe the rest. Although diver's tongue is the first tongue that ever happened, it is not the only tongue. Can I prove it to you? 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14. And now we're actually about to get into it now. We're going to really get into it now. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and I'm going to start in verse 13. It says, Therefore let him who speaks in a tongue pray that he may interpret. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there. Let me teach you something right here. Look at number look at verse 13 very closely. Therefore let him who speaks. Listen to this. In a tongue pray that he may interpret it. But watch this in verse 14. For if I pray Oh, listen to me. In a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Can I speak without praying? Are you sure? Be sure. Y'all don't sound confident. Can I speak without praying? Yes, you can. Yes, I can. Because I'm not praying right now, but I am speaking and I'm using a language. Do you hear what I'm saying? And if I speak, but I don't pray, the Bible says that I need an interpreter. I need to pray that there be an interpretation. But if I pray... Then if I pray in a tongue, my understanding is unfruitful. That means there's not going to be an interpreter because my mind is unfruitful to what I pray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, if there's an interpreter, my mind's going to be fruitful because I'm gaining something from it. When someone speaks in tongues, there's an interpreter. And there's an interpretation that goes forth that, that lets us know what the message was that gives out. And therefore, all of us gain understanding from it. Therefore, all of us are fruitful of it. But when I pray in tongues, I'm not praying for you to get a message. Understand? Let me go a little deeper. Can I go deeper? Let me go deeper. Let's read on. Verse 15. He says, What is the conclusion then? If I pray in an unknown tongue and my understanding is unfruitful, 
unfruitful. People will use that scripture right there. And they'll say, well, your understanding is unfruitful. You don't need to do it. What are you gaining from it? You don't need to pray in tongues. You don't need to pray in an unknown language. It's not fruitful. But Paul says, what is the conclusion? What is the end result then? And this is what his conclusion is. He says, I will pray in the Spirit. And I will pray with the understanding. I will sing in the Spirit. And I will sing with the understanding. That means I may not always be fruitful in my understanding. Don't worry. We're going to come back to that. I may not always be fruitful in my understanding. Therefore, I'm going to pray in the Spirit for the things that I do not understand. For the things that I cannot comprehend. There's some things out there that I just can't wrap my mind around. Why do people Why do people do certain things? I don't know. I don't got the understanding. But I know somebody that does. And when it rises up on the inside of me, I begin to pray about the things that I cannot understand. I may not have an, a fruitful understanding of it. So therefore, I'm going to pray in the Spirit. And then I'm going to pray about the things that I do understand. I'm going to pray with my English language in a way that I can't understand. Can I break that down to you? I've got an issue with people that come up for prayer and when you go and you lay your hand on them, the only thing that comes out is tongues. Yeah. I've got an issue with that. Yeah. You say, why? The Spirit's just praying for them. That's fine. That's fine. I understand that. The Spirit needs to pray. Let the Spirit pray. I'm not saying hinder it, but say something to them. Pray something to them. If it ain't nothing but a Bible verse, speak it to them. Because they need something that is fruitful to their understanding. When they come up here, I, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know if y'all feel them or not. I feel the Holy Ghost up here right by myself. I'm telling you, when somebody comes up here and you lay hands on them and all you do is ramble, blah, 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 and nothing's ever said to them or spoke to them with an understanding, they're leaving with nothing. Amen. They're leaving with nothing. They need something fruitful that they can take back with them. Right. Amen? But I'm not saying don't pray in the Spirit. I'm saying pray in the Spirit and pray with understanding. Sing in the Spirit and sing with understanding. How many of you is here Sunday night? Amen. Aunt Donna sung us a song. Yes, she did. In the Spirit. She sang in the Spirit in an unknown tongue that none of us could understand. We couldn't understand it. All we know is we felt better once it came forth. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. 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 Huh. Can we go deeper? Y'all learning anything yet? Yes. Verse 16. Otherwise, if you bless with the Spirit, how will he who will come... Uh, uh, huh? Yeah. Who occupy the pl occupies the place of the uniform say amen at your giving of thanks. Since he does not understand what you say. For you indeed give thanks well. But the other is not edified. He's basically reiterating what I just said. If I come up to somebody and I'm blessing them. And I'm, I'm, give, I'm giving thanks to God. And I'm, I'm blessing them and doing all these things. Guess what? If I do it all in tongues. They don't know what just happened. Let me tell you what they're doing. They're going, duh. Huh? What? I don't understand. I don't understand. We've got to give them something to hold on to. Can I go deeper? Yeah. All right. Now I'm about to, I'm about to kick it into overdrive. I hope y'all ready. I've given you the basis. Okay. Uh, do we understand? Do we understand what's interpreted and what's not interpreted? What doesn't? Let me let me say this before we move on. If a, if a message goes forth and it is interpreted, who does it edify? The church. It edifies the entire church. If a if a, if you pray in tongues and it's not interpreted, who does it edify? 
yourself. You say, why does, why does yourself need to be edified? Why does yourself need to be edified? Let me tell you why. If you want to turn to Jude chapter 1 and verse 20, it'll tell you why. He says, build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I got to edify myself sometimes. I'm getting ready. Hey, Amen. I'm trying to keep it slow tonight. But I may kick it in here in just a second. I want us to get some understanding tonight. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. First Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. That's where we're going to start. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. I want to read the very first part of that. Though I speak with the tongues of men. What is the tongues of men? That's what I'm speaking right now. That's what I'm speaking right now. And of angels. Let me ask you a question. I'm going to make you participate tonight whether you want to or not. Where do angels live? So if angels have a language, then that means there is a heavenly language. <laughs> and who else lives in heaven? God. So that tells me that if God lives in heaven and there is a heavenly language, then what language does God speak? He speaks the language of heaven. Now let me tell you something about heaven. I've got to teach you about heaven for a minute. Heaven is eternal. It's eternal. God is eternal. I'm about to teach you something about tongues you never knew. I, I feel it. I can feel it bubbling up. I feel the anticipation arising. Heaven is eternal. God is eternal. Okay? God speaks one language, and that language is eternal. It is an eternal language that always was and always is. It is an eternal language. And Paul said that we have the ability to speak an eternal language. So if the language is eternal... Do you know what dialect it is? <laughs> yeah. The dialect is His will. The language is eternal. The dialect of the language is His will. Can I go deeper? Is this going over y'all's head? Just going over y'all's head a little bit, a little bit. Okay, let me break it down a little bit. First John, give me. Let me give you some scripture. First John chapter five and verse fourteen. This is what it says. Listen very closely. Now this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, oh, listen to me. That's not how we quote it. We quote it if we ask anything. No, oh, just ask Him anything. But that's not what it says. It says, now this is the confidence that we have in Him. That if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. God only speaks one language. And that language is His will. His will is eternal. It is an eternal language that only He speaks. When I pray something that's out of His will, He doesn't understand it. He can't comprehend it. He doesn't know what language I'm speaking. But when I begin to pray in the will of God, Hallelujah. oh, listen to me. When I begin to pray the will of God, he says, that's something I understand. Let me, tell, let me show you something. Can I show you something? He says right here. He says, now this is the confidence that we have. Can I tell you? Oh, I can feel people ain't going to like this. You know you just know before you say something. 
You say, do you really want to read? Do you really want to get that email? You know, no, not really, but you're going to say it. He says, now this is the confidence that we have. When we pray, we ought to pray with confidence. If God only speaks His will, He does not speak defeat. Oh, listen to me. If before you ever go to prayer, you're already defeated, that is something that He can't understand. He does not know what defeat is. He's never been defeated. He is the all, he is the all-time heavyweight, undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, champion of the universe, and he does not know what it is to be defeated. So when we go to him in prayer, we are to go to him in confidence. Oh, my Uncle Larry says it all the time and I love it. He says, you know what I can't stand? I can't stand for somebody to get behind the pulpit that ain't got no confidence. Why? Because when you get behind the pulpit and everybody knows you're defeated and everybody knows you're hopeless, that is not something that they want to hear. And you can't be anointed if you're already defeated and you're already hopeless. You can't be anointed if you've already been torn down and beat down. Oh, I'm going to preach myself free tonight. Mm. He said, come to him in confidence. And when we pray according to his will, he hears us. Somebody say, give me some more. I got some more. Go to Romans. Mm. I'm starting to feel it bubble on the inside of me. What am I feeling? I'm feeling a confidence. Rise up inside of me. And his name is the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8. Good God. Calm down, Justin. Calm down. Calm down. Mm. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. Am I too loud yet? All right. Romans chapter 8 and verse 26. He says this. Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray. For as we ought. Hmm. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. He who searches, now He who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because He makes intercession for the saints. Listen to this. According to the will of God. You say, well, Justin, you just told us 1 John chapter 5. I'm getting ready to preach. 1 John chapter 5 says that he won't hear me if I'm not praying according to his will. Well, what if I don't know what the will of the Father is? He has given us an intercessor, and his name is the Holy Ghost. And when we don't know the will of the Father, the Holy Ghost will rise up on the inside of us and pray according. How many of you know uh, that the Holy Ghost uh, is from the same place the Father is? He speaks the language of the Father and is and it's called His will. Oh, I don't know what the will is. Uh, I don't understand the storm I'm in. I don't know which way to go. Uh, I don't know what it is that I need to do. What is your will, God? Uh, if you let the Holy Ghost rise up uh, and begin to shout, if you begin to speak in an unknown tongue, the will of the Father would be interceded over your life. Calm down. Calm down. Huh? Calm down, Justin. Good. I must speak His will. I've got to speak His will. If I don't speak His will, ain't nothing going to be heard from me. And I don't want to pray in vain. I want all my prayers to be heard. I want all my prayers to be effective. I want all my prayers to be fruitful. And that means I've got to have the Holy Ghost. Because I don't always understand. I don't always do His will. I don't know why I'm depressed. I don't know why I'm stressed out. I don't know why I feel like I'm going crazy. All I know is if He don't intervene on my behalf, I'm going to die. Oh! Have you ever 
ever been where I'm at? Have you ever? Oh, come on, somebody. I'm going to get real with you. Have you ever been where I'm at? Where if he don't intervene, I don't know what's going to happen to me. I'm ready to throw my hands up and quit and give it away and let somebody else do it. I'm ready to push the plate away. But if God gets a hold of you, quit will no longer be in your vocabulary. Your language will be changed. There's a new language. Huh. Oh, yeah. We got to have the Holy Ghost uh, that can speak His will. Because Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 9, it says, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. How many of you know that Pastor Justin's understanding will get you in a lot of trouble? How many of you know that if you lean on your understanding and what you know and what you think, it'll get you in a lot of trouble? You say, I don't believe it. Guess where? Guess how you got where you are today? By your understanding. How'd you get into that mess? By your understanding. By your thinking. By your way. If you was listening to your way and not trying to do it your way. But I've got to have the language. Oh, I've got to have a language. I've got to have a language in order to preach His will. I've got to have a language in order to pray His will. Let me tell you something. From a pastor perspective, I have to preach every Sunday morning. Every Sunday night. Every Wednesday night. And you say, oh, that's easy. Anybody can get a message together. And let me tell you something. Baby, you're right. Anybody can put some scriptures together. Anybody can interpret some scriptures here and there. And teach you something. And preach you something. But in order for it to be anointed. In order for it to be on time. I've got to have somebody on the inside of me. That is given me the come on somebody I don't want to stand up here and just preach anything I want to stand up here and preach something that is going to touch somebody so that they can get it inside of them get free and overcome and take it out of this building and preach it to somebody else but in order for me to do that I got to know his will. And in order for me to know his will, we got to have communication. And in order for us to have communication, I got to be able to speak the language. Uh, huh. I got to be able to speak the language. Hmm. Can Satan, I got to dial it down. Good God. Can Satan understand your tongues. No. Are you sure? I hope so. Are you positive? No. Are you 100%? No. Show me the scripture. No. Show me the scripture. I'm going to do something. Watch me. Nobody jump up and leave. Wait till I hear. Wait till you hear it all. Okay? What if I was to tell you? What if? This is an if. What if somebody was to come up to you and say, Wanda, can Satan understand my tongue? And you tell them, no. And they say, show me the scripture. Can you go to the scriptures and show me a scripture that proves he can't understand it. It's hard to do. Because there isn't a scripture in the Bible that says Satan cannot interpret the tongue. It's not in there. I've searched. But let me show you a scripture that's in here. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 1. We just read it. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of 
angels. Now wait a second. Don't nobody jump up and leave. Don't shut me off yet. Hear, hear all of it. Was Satan an angel? His name was Lucifer. And he was the light bearer. He was the praise and worship leader. The prettiest angel of them all. If he was an angel, that means he had to have speak the language. Nobody jump up. Don't cut me off yet. I got a question. I got, don't cut me off yet. Let me finish. Let me finish. I'll come back to you if you still need, got a question. Listen to me. So I'm going to ask you again. I'm going to ask you one more time. Can Satan interpret your tongues? Oh, listen to her. Listen to her. She's, she's beating me to the theology. See, here's my thing. I went into this study believing just like all of you believe. Satan cannot interpret my tongue. I've always believed that way. I've always been taught that way. But I've never been shown scripture. So I had to go into this study knowing that I could not find the scripture to back up what I believe. And I had to say, I'm taking my belief and I'm sitting it on a shelf. And I'm going to go to the scripture and either prove me right or prove me wrong. The first scripture that I came to was 1 Corinthians 13 and 1. And I said, okay, Satan was an angel. Technically speaking, he is still an angel. He's just a fallen angel. So now I need to go into the Word of God and I need to find me some scriptures that can back up my doctrine. How many of you know that in the realm of theology, I told you I'm going to teach tonight, in the realm of theology, I've got to have three scriptures in order to confirm what I believe. I've got to have at least three. So let me take your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Oh, yeah. Say, I'm about to learn something. You might, I might not change your mind, but I'm going to tell you what I am going to do. I'm going to give you some ammunition to fight with. Alright? I'm going to give you some ammunition. Ammunition. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And turn to verse 13. And this is what it said. These things we also speak not in words, which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So now we know we're not talking about man's words. We're talking about a language given by the Holy Spirit. Now watch this in verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. What does that tell me? That tells me it has to be more than a spirit being to understand my tongue. It has to be a spiritual it's got to be more than the spirit, than a spirit, but it's got to be something on a higher level that can receive a gift called the discerning of spirits. And if it don't got the gift, then it cannot understand. You following me? 1 Corinthians chapter 12 tells us that discerning of spirits is a Holy Ghost given gift. And if the Holy Ghost don't give it, you ain't got it. That's right. But that's only one scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. You ain't even got to leave the chapter. Just flip to verse 9. Paul says, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love 
Him. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. <laughs> is Satan the Spirit of God? No. He's the opposite. So that tells me he cannot understand what I'm saying. I'm about to break loose here in a second. Don't worry. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. A verse number dose. Number two. That was my diverse tongues coming out. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2. This is what it says. It says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to man, but to God. For no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. It's a mystery to everyone except him. When I begin to pray in an unknown tongue, no man can understand me. But I'm getting ready to go a little deeper. Not only can no man understand me, no devil can understand me. Because he does not have the spirit to discern what I'm saying. Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know the story of Gideon? It's a good story, isn't it? An angel of the Lord comes to Gideon. He says, Gideon, mighty man of valor. <laughs> Gideon says, who are you talking to? You must be talking about one of my brothers. One of my brothers. they fighters. I'm not a fighter. I'm a lover. I'm a lover, not a fighter. He says, Gideon, you're a mighty man of valor. I need you to rise up. You're going to get an army together. And you're going to go fight the enemy. He says, okay, I, I know I see the angel. I know I hear the angel. But I want to make sure it's the an, an angel. I want to make sure I'm not hallucinating. So what's, what's he do? The Bible says he set out a fleece before the Lord. Do you know what a fleece is? Did you know that we can set out fleece? Gideon takes some sheep's wool. Right? Wasn't it sheep's wool? Lamb's wool, something. Lays it out there in the front yard. And he says, Lord, and I may get this backwards, but it, he does both of them. I just can't remember which one was first, which one was last. But he says, okay, Lord, when I come out here in the morning, I want the ground to be wet. And I want the wool to be dry. Goes to bed, comes out the next morning, the ground is wet, the wool is dry. He says, Oh, still not convinced. <laughs> Lord, I'm going to leave it out here another night. I want, when I wake up in the morning, I want the ground to be dry and the wool to be wet. Goes to bed, wakes up, comes back out there. Guess what? The ground is dry and the wool is is wet. He has set out a fleece. What, that he, what he has done is he has set something out and he is saying, God, if this happens, I know it is you talking to me. We do it all the time in church. God, if they sang that song one more time. <laughs> if she'll get up and walk down to the altar and put her right foot in and take her right foot out and put her right foot in and shake it all about. I know it'll be you. Come on. How many of you know we do it? We do it. We do it. If he'll get an altar call one more time, what is we doing? We're setting a fleece out. And when we set out a fleece, we're supposed to do it in our mind. Because if we speak it into the air, then the prince of the air can grab it and he can intercept it. Oh, listen to me. 
He can intercept our words because once our words are spoken into the air, He grabs a hold of them and He can look at them and He can say, okay, this is what they're looking for. He wants the ground to be wet and the wall to be dry. So let me make sure that I get down there with my bucket and wet the wall. Come on. So that I can intercept the word. So when we receive the heavenly language. I'm getting ready to close. I ain't going to hold you much longer. Just bear with me. When we receive the heavenly language. What happens now. Is the intercession of the Holy Ghost. Begins to take place. Because we don't know what to pray. So the Holy Ghost rises up. And we begin to speak in a language that we do not understand. And it is sent into the air. Straight. I'm talking about overnight shipped to God Himself. Do you hear me? There ain't no waiting. There ain't no nothing. But just to ensure that it makes it. He made it to where Satan's power was fell off of him when he was booted from heaven. So now that when that word is put into the air, he grabs a hold of it and he looks at it and he says, none of this makes any sense. I don't understand any of this. Why? Because I don't speak the language. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> huh? I don't speak the language, says Satan. I don't know what to do with this. How many of you know the enemy gets nervous? Go home. Get your phone out. Get your computer out. Go find YouTube. And look up something called the Navajo Whisperers. The Navajo whispers. Look up. You can look it up like this. The language that won the war. Go look that up when you get home. You know what I'm talking about, don't you? What it was is in World War II, right? World War II. They devised a plan. They brought in all the Navajo Native Americans. And they got them to teach them their language. Because it was a dead language. It was a, I'm getting ready to go somewhere. I'm about to close. It was a language that no one understood. No one knew the dialect. And they told the Navajos, teach us this language. Because when we give a command over the radios in English, the, the, uh, the enemy is intercepting our words. And they're knowing our strategy before we can ever put them into, listen to me. They're, they're, they're coming against our plans and our strategies before we can ever actually fulfill it and do what we've got to do. They're beating us to it. We try to set an ambush and they know about it. Why? Because they know our language. And we need you to teach us a language that nobody else knows. That no Nobody else can understand so that when we begin to give out commands and we begin to put things into position and we begin to put things in order, the enemy cannot get it. He cannot intercept it. And they wound up winning the war because they had a language that no one else understood. Let me tell you something. God in his omniscient abilities knew that the greatest enemy against me was me. So he put a language on the inside of me that even I can't understand. I can't even intercept it. I can't even mess it up. Why? Because I don't even understand it. My understanding is unfruitful. And people will try and tell you that the only way that you can talk in tongues unless there be an interpreter present. I don't want there to be an interpreter sometimes because I don't want the enemy to intercept what God is trying to do. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't want him to be able to get his hands on it. I'm different. I'm different. I understand that. Amen. 
I take it in. I'm okay with it. I'm, I'm namaste. I'm all good. I'm a kuna matata. I ain't got no worries. That's right. Uh, that's the only thing I learned from Lion King. Akuna Matata. I'm not, I'm not worried about it. I know I'm different. I know a lot of people don't agree with me. But let me tell you one thing they can't do. They cannot deny that what we have does not work. Can't prove it. I got a few, I got a few statistics right here and then I'm going to close. Scientists conducted an experiment. You can look this up on YouTube as well. A scientist conducted an experiment on talking in tongues. Praying in tongues. That's what he done. He brought a guy in. He was a pastor. He brought him in. and He believed in praying in, in an unknown language. He believed just like we believe. He was Pentecostal. Brought him in, put him on a machine that took pictures of his brain. Not only could it take pictures of his brain, but it could show the activity of the brain. And what they had him do is they had him pray in his normal, everyday language. The frontal lobe of the brain is what conducts the language. When we begin to talk, the frontal lobe of the brain is at work, non-stop. It is at its highest activity point because we are putting words together. If the frontal lobe of your brain goes out, you can't talk. Other, in other words. And they had him praying in a regular language, in his regular everyday English language, and then they had him pray on command. Listen to me. They had him pray on command in the Spirit. Listen to what I'm saying. Took pictures of the frontal lobe. Tried to find the activity. They put the pictures side by side. And in the first picture, where he was speaking in his everyday language, there was a lot of activity in the frontal lobe. We know that. I just got done telling you that. But then, in the other picture that they took, while he was praying in the Spirit, there was very, very little Activity in the frontal lobe. Very little. That You say, well, it's, it, it, it ain't going to take a whole lot because you're just stringing rambling regular syllables together. Okay. This led him to do another study. They brought in a regular intercessing, intercessor woman, woman. She came in, and what they had her do is they had her put on headphones, blaring some good old gospel music. And she, they, all throughout the study for hours, they would check the activity in her brain. All throughout the study for hours. And for hours she listened to gospel and she'd pray. And she'd sing and she'd pray and she'd sing and she'd pray. And after a time of praying and singing in her natural language, she began to press into the Spirit and began to pray and sing in tongues. Listen to me. They were taking pictures all throughout it. The scientist then puts both pictures side by side. And in the first picture, he shows you that there is major activity in the frontal lobe as she prays and sings in English. And as soon as she presses into the Spirit and begins to pray and sing in tongues, there was zero. Do you hear me? Zero activity in the frontal lobe of her brain. If that part of your brain shuts down, you don't talk. Yet here she is speaking a language <laughs> without using what science says it takes. Listen to me. The scientist said when he went into the study, he was a skeptic. And he says, I still can't stand here before you today and say that it is God speaking through them. But I can tell you, there is no scientific explanation for what they are doing. It doesn't make sense scientifically. You may tell you why. 
Because it's supernatural. It's supernatural. You can look this up. ABC 3340 done a, a um, documentary on this study. You can go look it up when you get home. It doesn't make sense. There's many articles that have been published by scientists that have come forth and have, have done their own studies and they all find the exact same thing. They all come to the same conclusion that there is no scientific explanation for what is going on. Your mouth should not be moving and words should not be coming out because that part of your brain is not active. It is shut down. <laughs> How many of you know we serve a God that proves Himself? He proves Himself. Because when we know not what to pray, you may tell you why you can't find activity on my brain when I'm praying in the Spirit. Because when I'm praying in the Spirit, it's not me praying. <laughs> but it is the Spirit. Yes, that's right. It comes from the Spirit. It comes from my Spirit. My Spirit is making intercession for me. Hallelujah. Did you learn something tonight? Has it been good tonight? Hallelujah. Hey guys, I hope today's message has encouraged you and has built your faith because our Bibles tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And I pray that we've placed the seed of faith inside of you today. Um, if there's uh, anything that you would like to request prayer for or anything like that, you can always go to our website at houseofthepromisechurch.com. Go to the link that says prayer request and send in any prayer request that you may have. But I want to take just for a few minutes and pray with you guys that the Holy Spirit would just continue to lead you and guide you and direct you in the way that you should go. Dear Heavenly Father, we just pray right now and we ask that any situation, any circumstance that anybody may be facing right now, God, God, I pray that you would intervene like only you can, God. I pray that your healing power, God, would go forth and touch them that are sick. Your delivering power would go forth and free them that are in captivity and save those that are lost, God. God, we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching, and be blessed.